Okay, so hi everybody, hope you can hear me all right. Just gonna give it a couple of minutes to uh, let everyone get the coffee and uh, get through with the break. So I think everyone's, uh, I think everyone's staying safe and, uh, in, in, the, in these short times, but it's good that we can get together virtually, even if we can't get together in, in person, which would obviously be the preferred route. Alrighty, so I'm going to get going. Uh, my name's Andy Garrett. Um, I'm the uh, technical offering manager for the uh, IBM Cloud Platform Integration based out of uh, IBM Hursley in the UK. And as it's a roundtable, I thought we'd do something a little bit differently. So I'm going to do the entire session without the aid of PowerPoint, because I thought on a conference like this, there's probably a lot of PowerPoint and people say, let's show rather than do. So let's, uh, let's see what we can do. So I'm going to share my screen up and I'm going to take you through to our, uh, our web homepage. So I hope you can see that. Uh, Olga, who's uh, my IBM colleague on here, if you can let me know if people can't, can or can't see things. So normally I get in a PowerPoint, but yeah, let's, show, let's, let's show you how we actually position uh, where we are. So IBM's Cloud Pack for Integration is IBM's key integration product. It has all of the different capabilities that you need for integration. It does APIs, of course, and that's what we're going to talk about today. But it also does event streaming. It does message queuing. It does... Um, uh, bulk file transfer, it does secure gateways, all that kind of good stuff. And the key thing is we say that integration should be um, multi-style. It should be um, closed loop so that we can monitor and interact and test and uh, get our uh, get our uh, development uh, loop really, really tight for the ICD. And also have AI um, empowered of the developer and also of the user so that we can uh, you know, make people as efficiently as possible. Our key use cases are to use APIs to drive new engagement models. So obviously, uh, people are getting out there. Obviously, at the moment, with uh, the, the current state of the world, people are doing a lot more online. People are having to uh, interact um, you know, over the internet a lot more. And people are having to scale a lot more um, and get things to market more quickly. And so that's what we've been focusing on. Uh, we want to integrate more efficiently. So we're going to show you how you can actually build um, APIs more quickly and with um, you know, smaller teams, because the idea of hundreds and hundreds of developers building APIs might work in a large organization. But we're finding a lot more that citizen developers are building APIs. We're finding that small teams are building APIs for their own use. And we're finding that building APIs is part of a full stack development so that one person will build the APIs that they want to consume as well. So the idea is that the traditional idea of people building an integration and exposing it as an API, then putting that into an API manager, then putting policies around it, then actually sort of going up and having someone else who builds the um, who builds the API consumer, that still works, that still scales, and the Cloud Pack for Integration supports that very well. But what we've found is a lot more companies nowadays are using full stack developers, the proverbial two pizza team. And so we want to be, show you how to do it more efficiently. And this is what the new experience is all about. Obviously, because we're IBM, security is 100% uh, upfront. And you know, as well as be doing all of this stuff, getting out there, move fast, getting to market quicker, we want to make sure that everything is thoroughly secured and making sure that security is baked in and uh, that we use our uh, security gateways um, right, from, uh, right from day one. And so this is basically where we're at. If you want to try the product after you've seen the demo, please go and search for IBM Cloud Pack for integration. And there's a free trial available. Just literally sign up or we need your email address. And uh, you know we'll provision an environment for you. And you can go and check it out yourselves. There's also pre-built tutorials and demos built into there so that you can uh, give it a go and uh, check out some of the stuff we've been doing. So I'm going to hop straight in. As I said before, there's no PowerPoint on this. It's all product and all. Um, and all web. So hopefully, maybe something a little bit different. So the idea of the Cloud Pack is that you have everything that you need to build any style of integration, any style of API, and all the, all the different uh, types of things that you need all in one box. There, you don't pay by product. You buy capacity of how much um, you know, sort of how much uh, load you're going to use, you know, how much how much CPU you're going to use to do things, and you don't have to choose up front. So we obviously got the full API lifecycle management. We're going to show you. This comes with the um, you know IBM's uh, Data Power Gateway, which is a dedicated security gateway product in the box. All of the um, integrations to actually build the API, compose the API. We're going to show you come in the box, and also the um, all of the connectors are in. 
the messaging is in there. IBM's MQ, which you probably know about, um, manages an awful lot of uh, the world's finance and doing assured delivery. There's event streams for when you need Kafka. Um, and obviously things like monitoring and tracing are built in. And also the high-speed data transfer if you need to bulk, uh, bulk data. But API is what we're about today. This is an API conference, so we'll get straight into that. Um, key thing about APIs is you need to make it secure, and we'll, sh we'll show that, we'll show the gateway, but also you need to be able to scale, and you need to be able to scale on demand and make sure that you can uh, be highly available. Obviously, APIs are your shop window. So all of this runs on top of um, OpenShift, which is uh, obviously uh, you know our, uh, our uh, Red Hat friends produce. So all of this is running on top of Kubernetes, on top of OpenShift. So everything you build is highly scalable, highly available, highly expandable, and is cloud natively done. We use things like, um, you know, we use things like, um, you know, replica sets, secrets, all this kind of stuff, and it's all available underneath. And it runs anywhere that OpenShift runs. So you can run it on IBM Cloud, obviously, which is where I'm going to show you here. But you can run it on premise. You can run it on AWS. You can run it on uh, Azure. You can run it on Google Cloud. Anywhere that OpenShift will run, you can run the cloud platform integration. So it's your choice. You can run it anywhere and everywhere. But that over, let's uh, let's actually get in. So everything's available. Um, you can see we can design, we run, we manage. Everything's all in one place. And the other thing is everything you can do from the GUI, you can also do from the command line as well if you wish. So obviously, we're fully GitOps compatible. So that's, uh, let's, let's get straight into it. So I'm going to go in and say, right, I want to build an API. And one of the things that uh, we, we've, we've heard is that people say, well, OK, I want to build an API. What do you need to do to build an API? Well, the first thing people say often is, "Well, I need to build a, um, I need to build an API. Um, you know, um, I need to build Swagger or an Open API spec." And we say, "Well, that's kind of hard. You know, you need to learn to build an API spec. I mean, there's obviously various tools out there. We've got quite a few, but you need to know what GET and POST are. You need to know, um, you know, what all the different constraints are. You need to know how to do REST. You need to know what the structures are. What's, um, you know, what the security standards are and everything." And we think that's kind of hard. So we want to make the tool work for you. So we can go and directly create a flow. We can uh, create all sorts of things. But we can also go in and create a flow just by describing an integration in the uh, natural language. So we come up, We actually have a lot of different templates ready for you and so that you can start off quickly. And literally, we use IBM Watson underneath. Um, if you've heard about the IBM Watson that uh, won the Jeopardy game show, that's in here. So basically, I can just say, say for example, I want to build something to sync my uh, contacts or sync my customers, um, you know, between my systems. All right, I just want to sync my customers uh, between my systems, and then what it's going to do is it's going to actually sort of look and see, you know, what's available there. And it's going to give me suggestions uh, for templates that I can get started with. So Watson's going to go off and look for things, sync leads between accounts, record states, sync leads between Salesforce accounts, and send email with the sync result. And it's going to go through lots of all of these templates and give me suggestions and options. And I can import um, you know, the, these to get started quickly. The other thing I can do is this also works with uh, ones that I've created and shared. So obviously, when I create an API, I want to reuse it. I want to make sure that anyone can reuse it. So I've started an API here. And I'm just going to say, right, here's my registry new customer API. This is what we're going to uh, show as an example. So I'm going to take this starting point from the asset repository, and it's basically to save me some typing. Otherwise, you'd see me typing away with fields, and uh, you know that's not very good for anyone. So what it's doing is it's gone into the asset repository, and it's creating me my instance of my development environment dynamically so that I don't have to download any tooling. It's basically going to uh, be fully browser-based and come through. And I apologize, because I'm uh, sheltering at home. I haven't got a very fast internet connection. So you can see <laughs> it's taking a little bit of time. So what we say is, OK, normally you'd have to go in and, and you know, get a Swagger editor or something. And people who just want an API really quickly don't necessarily want to do that. They want to just start getting um, you know, properties in there. So we've given them an editor where literally you just type in the field names. I mean, I've built this up before, so I don't have to type it. But I can just click Add Property. And I can add whatever I want to do. So if I type out a loyalty oops, card name, and I just sort of type it in, I can say whether it's I want it to be a string or an object or whatever. And this is all very nice. But what it's actually doing underneath, and we'll show you, is it's building your open API to the standards. 
we've read all the open API books, we've read um, Fielding's paper and all the rest of it. And so this is building you a full REST compliant API underneath, but without having to know about it. For example, we know that you have to have an ID and there's our model. And you can have as many models as you want. So we move on to operations. What do we want to do with our model? And we then sort of come down and we and we select the operations. Now, this is where you'd normally have to worry about get or put or post. And I'm thinking, well, um, you know, po is post great? Is put great? I can never remember which one's which. So we put it nicely in English for you. So I can do create customer. I can do retrieve customer. Um, so if I do create customer, for example, it's going to tell me here's post and customer. And it's actually going to be building this fully REST compliant API. Um, I can have as many of these as I want. And also, I've got things like replace or create with filter. You know, the, the most common things that you want to do, it will automatically do it. So we can do the post. It will automatically generate the update where. You can click which you know, keys you want to do and all of these things. So again, you don't have to be an API expert. If you are an API expert, that's absolutely fine. You can go in and use different parts of the tooling to import um, ones and, and explicitly create um, you know, open API specs with all the uh, editing if you want. But we found to get it. E to make it easy to create and expose and manage APIs, we can get going with this. You know, we'll build one in real time for you. So I'm just going to keep it simple with one um, with one flow. We'll go through here. So what we're going to do is it's now creating my API for me. And what the new experience does is this is known as the uh, the Cloud Platform Integration Designer. And the idea is that it holds your hand and takes you through the process of creating an API so that anyone can do it, but it's going to be building a full enterprise strength API. It's going to be highly scalable, secured, et cetera, and it's going to look after you at all the way. And so, for example, we know that with an API, we need a request and response. So why do we ask people to create a response? Well, we'll, we'll put that in for you because we know that you need it. The request body, we know that this is how you're going to call the API. Now. We uh, know that this is what our structure is, and it's created the JSON for you. If you want, you can take it and uh, you, know, you can edit the sample data. And so it's trying to help you out at all times at what you're going to do. So we're going to keep it very, very simple. We're going to take a request, and we're going to say this request is, let's say it's an API where we get a new customer um, inquiry on our website. Someone's interested in our product or you know, in our service, and we want to take this and register it as a lead in Salesforce. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the request in, and I'm going to go to the next uh, the next part. And again, what it's going to do is it's going to go off and find everything I've got available to me to connect to, because and the, the API is coming in. And what do I want to do? I want to apply logic. I want to connect to different systems. And we supply a huge pile of connectors out of the box. And you get all of them. We release a new, uh, some new ones every quarter. And you know you don't have to like sort of you know buy them individually or pay for them individually. You get all of them out of the box. And um, you know, basically, if there's one we don't have, let us know, and uh, we'll see what we can do. So the first demo, I'm going to go to Salesforce, and if I go through here, it should it should, uh, and I should have uh, sacrificed to go to the demo gods. I apologize. Oops. And oops. There we go. I'm going to go into to the Salesforce connector. Now the now the connectors are all what we call smart connectors, and what it is is you can have as many different accounts in the connectors as you want. So you can connect to as many different. So say you've got multiple databases or multiple Salesforce instances, multiple mainframes, whatever it is, you can have as many as you want. Different accounts keep the credential secure. But what it actually does is it goes off to the system and it collects all the metadata, and it brings it back in words you can understand. I am not an expert in integrating to Salesforce, but the connector is. So all I have to do is pick it up in plain English. So we said we're going to take our API and we're going to create a lead. All right, well, there you go, create a lead. I'll go and I'll go and do that. That's all I need to do. And so you know, I've got a request, I've got Salesforce, and so I've got a response. And what it's now doing is in real time, it's going off to Salesforce and it's getting all of the fields that it needs to be able to create a lead. Now, why is this important? Why don't we just hard code them? Because systems can vary. You can modify Salesforce. You can modify SAP. You can modify databases. So if you have custom fields in there, you don't want to be restricted. So we go off and find out what they are. If you modify your system, we'll go and get them um, for you. Now, obviously, there's um, various hints here. You can see stars indicate mandatory fields. Um, we've also got the ones where it goes off and if the fields are enumerated, it automatically goes and finds it. So say, for example, lead source here. This isn't a hard code and connect it. It goes off, finds out what the available ones here. We're obviously getting it from the web, so let's populate it there. 
But for those of you who know about integration, integrating into different systems, there's hundreds of fields. And it can be a bit of a nightmare to find out uh, you know, what to do and to map. And we said, well, you know, this is something that um, you know, people don't want to do, they're not experts in. So why don't we um, why don't we apply a little bit of AI, a little bit of IBM Watson here? So what it's doing is it's looking in request, looking at Salesforce, and I've got suggestions for you for mapping. And this is what we call mapping assist. And what this does is it goes through, and it's not just a simple grep or a um, you know a an idea of saying this is what uh, I want to do. Um, yeah, you know, it's not just a direct match. It's actually doing sort of a, you know a bit more of a um, fuzzy intelligent map. For example, we can see last name is last name. It knows that city and town are the same thing, you know, because it's actually you know using using AI rather than just doing a straight match, and it sort of goes through. And we can review these before we put them in. So, for example, I can see the ID here. Do I want the individual ID to be the ID that comes in? No, I'm doing a crate. And for those of you who know, when you do a crate with the rest, you can answer by the ID or not. But I want Salesforce to do the ID. So again, I'm in control here. I'm going to take it out. And so all I'm going to do here is do apply 11 suggestions. And I'm going to make sure that my uh, that my map mapping is done for me. So I'm pretty, yeah, I'm pretty, pretty, uh, pretty start, started off. Now, at this point, those of you who've done integration before, those of you who've built APIs that connect to systems before are thinking, well, hang on a minute, you know, now this is where I'd like to test it. Maybe I should go through and finish the API and go through, do a build, do a deploy, and, and do some testing. And, and I say, where's the test tool? And we want to make it easy for people who don't do integration. We're building APIs here. We're exposing your data here. We're worrying about things like security. We're worrying about things like rate limiting. That's what people are worried about and getting the data in the right place. So we want to make it easy to make sure that it works first time. So we've built the tester right into the tool. We literally click here, and what this is going to do is it's going to actually test this node in real time for you. It's going to go off directly to Salesforce. Ah, um, OK. It's going to go directly off to Salesforce and actually do this integration for us to show that it's making a connection. OK, that's not good. Let's go and have a look. So I've got a bad request, and it's saying, oh, the email is, is invalid. Is it? I'll get my input data. And oh, remember, it, I showed you that it had all the samples here? I've got a sample email. And this proves it's actually going to Salesforce directly. I'm now actually iteratively testing. And so what I'm doing here, I'm going invalid email address. Well, of course. So OK, maybe I've got to write a test case after all. Well, no, I'd, I'd rather not do that. Let's, uh, let's go and have a look. So if I go down to my email here, I've got my, oops, apologies for this, uh, the joys of uh, the Safari. Let me zoom in. As you can see, we're fully accessible. We can zoom. That sample data is being rendered here in real time, a sample email. If I can do edit, I can edit my sample data here, and I can regenerate it. So I want to make it easy as possible so I can generate data. And again, it knows what an email is. It knows what a first name is. It knows what a last name is. So you know, it's taking all the, it's even got um, telephone numbers, it's picking countries. And you can see here that in real time, my data is being mapped. I can see my company. I can see the street, et cetera, et cetera, all this kind of stuff. So let's give it another go. Let's see if that works. And this is one thing we found is that when you're doing building APIs and building integration, you want to shift left. You want to test early. You want to test interactively, especially if, you, if all you care about is the data. You don't want to learn Salesforce or you know, mainframes or DB2 or whatever it is. You want to get your data out. And so I've done the test real time. Here we go. Um, oh, I've actually got my test results. I've got my lead ID from Salesforce. And it's actually created that in Salesforce for me. I can go into Salesforce or go into my application, and it's really done it. I can do interactive things. Now I could create a GET, for example, and go and, go and test it. But of course, mapping isn't always that simple. So let's try something different. I mean, quite often, a lot of people say, I want to maybe uppercase my last name. All right, I'll apply a function. And I'll get a string functions. Let's try this. And I'm just going to go to uppercase it. And what we've done here is we found that obviously you know there are expert users, and if you want to be ex you know, an expert, then that's fine. That we've got a uh, you know a lot of languages that are fully functional, but we found that most people know how to do a spreadsheet formula, for example. They know how to use Excel, and they know how to apply formulas, how to um, you know type into Excel sheets. And you notice there's no lines or anything in the mapping. We don't have lots and lots of different lines. We focus on where the data is going to. We're actually sort of mapping it in here. And notice again, it's real time. I've put the uppercase. There's Marsh in this last name here. So if I put some like Marshman in there, 
notice in real time, it's doing my mapping. I don't have to go in, test it, start a tester, et cetera. Why would I want to do that? I can build it in the browser. This is so, you know this idea of modern responsive tooling. And so again, I can go in, try this action. Let's see if Salesforce is actually OK with the um, thing there. Yes, it is. It's absolutely fine. No problem at all. So I've got, to, I've got my data coming back here. But like you say, that's a very simple example. Um, what happens if I want to do more complex mapping? Let's take an example. I've got my phone in here. And this is, uh, for those of you based in the USA, this is a fairly um, standard way of uh, explaining a, a um, phone number. I've got the uh, you know, I've got the area code and such like and the subscriber number here. But And you can see that Salesforce is happy with it. But we're international business machines. We appreciate that people don't necessarily always have the same format. So the dates are a perfect example. So let's say that I want all my uh, numbers to be in the international format with the plus one with the country code in. Now, normally, I'd have to start writing some code with that or a complex mapping and swap. And um, you know, I'd have to sort of uh, you know sort of go through and uh, you know code it up, test it, and make sure I'm, I'm all right. But we looked and we said, well, how do people normally explain what the mapping is? If I'm a developer and I go to my uh, business person, I say, how do you want to map it? They'll give me some examples. They'll say, well, you know when you see this, make it look like this. You know when you see this, make it look like this. And Andy, you can work it out. So we said, well, if I can work it out, I'm fairly sure Watson can work it out as well. So if I click here, I can do generate transformation. And what this is, again, we're adding the AI in here to enable you to do mapping so that we can write the code for you just by learning by example. And I'm just going to, you're going to have to uh, cope with my uh, slow typing for a little bit here, but let's, let's show what I mean. So if I give it some examples here, what I want to do is I'm going to say, this is how my data is going to come in. This is, uh, I'm hoping this isn't actually anyone's phone number. If it is, I do apologize. And uh, what are we going to say here? Five, six, seven, um, five, four, three. Yeah, this can be just any, anything. I'm giving examples. And we found from experience that normally about, uh, I don't know, normally, but normally five samples is um, yeah is the, is the best way to go for it to learn from. It depends how complex you uh, you want you want it to be. And again, I'm just uh, giving it sort of random examples here. And one more. So uh, I'm going to add my favorite American uh, area code, which is three two one, which is um, the uh, the Space Coast down in Florida. That's where that's where NASA is three two one blast off. So that's my that's my favorite area code. And I say, okay, there's my source data. Let's tell you what my target data wants to be. So I'm going to do the uh, international standard. That's plus one for the USA and Canada. And I'm actually going to uh, lock those together there because this is how I want my ones to be. So I can go in and I can do plus one, uh, five, six, seven. And apologies that uh, it takes me a little time to type this in, but uh, yeah, it's a lot easier than the writing a power code. So I can go in, do this. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm giving examples. And you can do you know, all sorts of different things. One of the uh, common ones we also show is, for example, if you are um, your name comes in as, say, Mr. Andy Garrett, and a lot of systems want something like Garrett in, um, in uppercase, maybe an airline ticket, comma, A, and Mr. And you, know, you can do that kind of um, complex thing without having to work out where the splits are and the joins are and all this kind of thing. So literally, all you're doing is you're giving you the examples here. And so it's basically, if you see that, if you see that, and then you're gonna hit generate transformation. And basically what it's doing is it's writing the code for you. And you can see that it writes it in a way that is sort of formula friendly. So again, you'll notice there's no sort of star concat, et cetera. It's gonna say, you know, it's gonna be plus one, you can see, plus the substring from the first or the third, plus that strip thing. And it's worked out that the best way to get the last one is actually to do a split after the space rather than do a substring. So again, it's looking at various different ways to do it. So we we ship up, um, you know, a lot of this has been trained out of the box. It does learn from you, but because we're IBM, it only learns from you. All your learnings, all your insights are private to you on your installation, wherever you do it. You don't even share them with IBM. You can share them around your team. So different developers can learn from different learnings uh, you know, if, you, if you teach it. But, um, you know, we don't uh, we don't sort of crowdsource it or anything like that. Everything is everything is private to you. So I'm going to insert the transformation, and you can see here that um, you know I've got uh, I've got my real time uh, data here, so I can sort of go through and it'll sort of you know, pick it up. And again, you know, I can run it straight off here, so I can just sort of go through and I'll say, all right, I'll actually want to try this. Hit the button, and I'm good to go. So if I run through, I'll get to uh, Salesforce here. 
So that's going to work all right. Usage of one of these records detected. Very saying. Okay, I've got a duplicate. It's saying that uh, I've got I've got a duplicate detected, and what this is, this is a, this is actually Salesforce saying, "Well, hang on a minute, you've had Isabel Marshman before. Um, what are you going to do here?" So because you get Isabel Marshman, um, well, that's actually you know that's um, hmm, that's a bit tricky. Maybe we want to update Isabel Marshman. Well, okay, well, let's let's just hold this for now. So if I just say Elizabeth Marsh Al, then um, and I'll change the uh, the email address just to get around this for the moment, and we'll come back to to show how we can change this. I'll change that in real time, give it a go, and say, well, okay, I want to get my API. I'll worry about duplicates detected in a little bit, but we'll show you how to do that. Go through, and we're all good. And just to finish the API, so I've done all my mapping, I've done all my connecting, I've tested all that kind of thing. To finish my API, I've obviously got to give it a uh, give it a response. And all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to manually pick that, and I just want to pick up the Salesforce ID. And again, all I need to do is I can go and I can look at my request parameters, I can look at my uh, response parameters, and I can give them my lead ID here. And if I want, you know, I can uh, even sort of give a response back, and I can just say, you know, lead ID is the Salesforce ID. Now, I wouldn't normally do that because obviously with REST, but I just want to show that, that you know you can easily just uh, you can easily just type these things in, and it's mapping it in real time, and you know it's it's genuinely low code. You can see there, sample lead ID is a Salesforce ID, and I'm done. I've built my API, so I'm going to hit done. And if I want to do it end to end as well, I can go in and, and test it end to end just to test all that all that works. So I'll go back and edit my flow. And I'll come in. I'm going to say, I'm going to try this flow. So I'll hit the button. And so I've tested my individual nodes. I've got a failure there. Test it. Oops, valid email address isn't right. OK. Check the sample data. Regenerate my sample data. And therefore, what I'm going to get Kari Malani. I'll go through. And what I'm actually doing is I'm creating my API here. And so I can see all my mappings. I can go through. And of course, it's only giving me about my object ID because this is actually what I want to do with my API. Now, normally, maybe I'd uh, send all my different things back. That's OK. So that's my mapping, and that's my integration. That's fine. And that's created an API. And I can go in, and it's created the open API. This is what it's done underneath. I mean, you, you've seen everything I've done. I've, not, you know, I've only imported that little structure at the start. And I can see my schemas. And I can see my customer. And this is very important that um, you know, I've got all my properties, et cetera, that I want to do in my schema. But um, I can actually go in and see my source in real time. So it's building me my um, it's building me my API in YAML uh, in real in real time. It's fully open API uh, compatible. You see open API 3.0, registering new customer, etc. So again, if you want to do it in code, if you want to see it in code, that's fine. You want to see it in the nice GUI, see it in the GUI. It's fully equivalent. It's full, it's not even round trippable. It's yeah, it's actually in there right away. So again, all of this uh, good stuff. So it's fully you know, op open compatible. It's a big thing we have in IBM that we say that uh, you know we follow all the uh, all these source of standards. And of course, this is the this is the new thing that is you know, building your API, exp exposing your data as an API. So I'm basically doing all my integrations that be as complicated as I want. But because we're APIs, APIs are all about management and security and exposing. So what I've got here is right in the same editor. I've gone from designing my integrations and my logic into my policies. And so here, what I can do is I can build my API policies, and I can do all of the different qualities of service and things that I want to be able to do. So I can do various things right at, right at the gateway. So I can do things like passing and pass checking. I can do redactions. Uh, if I want to, I can um, do, you know, do, do XML, for example. Um, but I can also do things like rate limiting. Um, I can do uh, you know, JOT tokens. I can generate them when I'm doing uh, you know, security flows. I can validate JOT tokens. And all of this, all of this API part runs in IBM secured gateway data power. And so this is, you know, you can put it right on the edge. It's, um, you know, it's totally secured. It's built to security, uh, it's dedicated API gateway. You can have it hardware or software or container, whichever way you want to go. And so I can go in and I can basically say, OK, well, I just want to add a rate limit in there. So if I uh, drag that in, oops, see if I can uh, do that one there. And that should go in, and I can do a rate limit. I can uh, description, oh, no, rate limit my calls. And I can rate limit different ones, different uh, uh, different uh, yeah, operations and all that kind of good stuff. So I'm going to say I'm going to rate limit um, 
crates. And if I could type, I will be dangerous. Actually, matter all that much. And I'm going to tell it that I'm going to get from the plan default. So what I can do here, I'm building my API interactively, but I'm also looking at sort of different plans. I'm also looking at being able to manage it and expose this API through multiple different plans and multiple different products. I want to show you that in a minute. Now, what I've got here is I've built my API, et cetera, and I want to be able to test it again. So I've tested my integration. That's all fine. Now I need to publish it to my gateway, my secure gateway. I need to build it, deploy it, and publish it. And that's too much like hassle. I'm just going to press my magic green button here. What that's going to do is it's actually going to take it. It's going to take the API, deploy all of that designer code, deploy it down to a Kubernetes into a um, you know, into a deployment. It's also going to deploy my API management, my API policies onto the gateway so we can test it. And it's also going to auto generate me a test client. So it also generates me a test client. Again, it tells me what the endpoint is. If I want to add different uh, you know, testing in there, if you want to use IBM's uh, AI-led API tester, which is uh, another part of this, you can, you can apply this. I can download the open API document. I can explore, I can explore all of the things that I've built in a way that makes sense to me as a, as a REST consumer. So it also it also generates all of this. I don't have to do any, any of this at all. So it showed me my post, it showed me my security policies. I built a client ID in there, sample data. I can see what my schema is. Um, I can see examples here. Um, and again, we want to make it as easy for a full stack developer to use. So um, you know, if they want to write code to consume the API, why don't we just give them the, uh, the code that they need? Uh, it will auto generate the, uh, the code that they need to actually call this um, to actually call this API. So you can just copy and paste it in. And again, here's the responses, et cetera. And actually, if you want to try it, we can try it. So it comes through, uh, gives you a full test client here. So I'm going to generate some data. So again, there's Dominic Takana, or I can go through Luke Peroni. Again, it uses AI to generate the test data. I'm going to hit send. And what I'm doing, again, I'm not sending it over stubs. I'm sending it over real data. So I can, you know, I can link it directly to the mainframe, directly to uh, DB2. I can link it to emulations if I want, but it's much better to go in. And that's actually running in, in, real, uh, in real time here. So what I've got here is I've got, and again, I could add more operations, et cetera. And you know, if you want to try it, there's tutorials for this, this kind of stuff as well, but we've only got a certain amount of time. So what have we done? We've created the integration. We've connected to backend system. We've uh, applied a policy. We've deployed it on a secure gateway. I mean, this is actually um, you know, available on a secure gateway. Um, it's secured in here. Uh, if anyone wants to try and hit that, you can, you can try and hit it, and uh, you'll get, a, uh, you'll get a, an, invalid, um, you get an invalid request. And I'm saying, well, actually, you could try hitting that on the internet, because yeah, this is running on IBM Cloud. Um, but how would you know? How would you get credentials? Well, one of the things about the full stack is, if you're building a client, you need to be able to get API keys to test it. You need to be able to sign up with OAuth and things like that. And so normally, you'd have to push it to a management thing, maybe push it to a repository, you know, expose it out, generate keys and everything. But again, you know, you're developing. We want to test that, that that easily. I've got a mobile app to run. I'm up against a deadline. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hyper into the API portal. Now, the API portal, again, it's fully customizable, but this is the one that's out of the box. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit refresh in here. Oops, I'm sorry, that's my landline phone there. I'll just uh, let my uh, other half pick that up. And it's automatically published this API out to the portal so that a third party consumer can, uh, can see it. So I can go in here and I can see that here is my API. It's created a product because we have a full enterprise strength API management system here. For those of you who know IBM's API Connect capabilities, the full thing is in here and it's all built in. So I've got an API, I've registered a new customer, but notice I had a plan here. And so I can go in and I can look at the API. And this is for the API consumer. So before I, you know, I was the API developer, now I'm the API consumer. But quite often these days, I'm the same person. I'm building a mobile app, I'm building a website, I'm building B2B. All I want to do is to get that um, you know, lead data out, right? You know, I, I, it's, it's all about getting quickly. So this is helping me out. And we expose the same testing client here out onto the portal so that uh, you can see it and uh, you can try it. Apart from obviously we're very secure, I need to log in to try this API. All right, I've got to log in. Where do I get a um, an account from? Oh, it's fully self-service. So again, this is all out of the box. I haven't had to build anything. It's all it's all going through. I can sign up 
for access. And again, you know, we've got all the captures and all that kind of good stuff in there. And once I've signed up for access, it will actually send out an email and you can put approvals and things like this. So you're testing your full API lifecycle. You're testing that people can consume them. You're testing that people can find them on the portal. You're testing, you know, that you've got forum support. You so you can go through and actually sort of write your support documentation. You can put your support plan in place. You, know, you can write the blogs. You can put the API products into the catalogs and everything. And so you can test the entire API experience. It's all in one go. We're not sort of doing this big idea of handoffs and publish, et cetera. You know, again, it's all role-based security, but you're doing it all in one place. So as I said, how do I do it? Well, I have to sign in. So I'm going to uh, sign in. This is consumer two. And again, now I'm consumer two. What I'm going to be able to do, I am the consumer. So I can explore the uh, I can explore the uh, API products. So I'm going to select this plan, which is the 100 calls an hour. Now I need an application. Um, so I'm just going to say, um, how do I? Andy, uh, Andy new mobile app. And again, if I want to do OAuth or sign in by different, uh, you know, OAuth or OpenID providers, then I can. I'm going to hit save here, and it's going to give me my API key, my API secret, and I can obviously you know copy those down, or I can uh, go and go and share them. Um, and again, you know, it's this full thing. I haven't had to do a deploy or a build or anything. It's 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 built it's built it all together, so that's all fine. So I'm going to click this uh, new mobile app, and what it's going to do is, for me as the consumer, and if you're in production, this is what your consumers would see. Obviously, you can skin it as as you want, but as a developer and as a development team, I want to be able to do it all in one go, all from one place. There's only me, right? So I want to come in. I want to uh, I want to go in. Slightly 100 calls an hour. Yep. How did I do that? Let's uh, let's go and have a look. That's the wrong one. There. No, I need to go back to. I've already subscribed. I need to go back to uh, the API. And if I go into do my post customer, then what it should do, if I go to try it, yeah, it's actually automatically put my credentials in here. It's helping me out at all times. I can hit generate. So not only can my API developer try it, my API consumer can try it too. So let's have a look. Let's see if this works. So I'm going to hit send. And I'm going to go through. And it's actually going to run my API. So that it's actually calling from this test client onto the gateway, onto the internet. And I could you know, actually try it from my mobile app if I wanted. You know, it's actually real there. I could download the API key, download the swagger, download the secrets. That's the Salesforce ID. And what I can do is I can send it again. Ah, OK. What I was going to show you is the rate limit. It's actually testing the rate limit. It's testing your security policy. We can see um, we've only got 94. Out of the hundred, out of the hundred left, because I've uh, you know, and I've got other people calling. It. Um, and I've only got so many left. Um, we got a problem here. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, create leads, duplicates detected. Hang on, didn't we see that before? I said I'd fix that. And so what we want to do is to say, well, normally I'd have to go back and you know call the API developer and go through and redeploy again. But um, let's uh, let's actually go in here. So I'm going back into Designer. And I can go in and I can uh, stop that one here because I can't uh, edit it while it's running. Uh, so that's going to stop. That's going to undeploy. Let's wait a little sec here. So it's coming for me. Yep, stopped. So I'm going to go into the designer. And what I'm going to do is I am going to go into my operations and I'm going to go and fix that up. So what we want, what we're finding is here is that rather than going through you know, lots of big steps and everything, we're finding that we want to iterate rapidly. We want to try think try things out, especially for people who are new to APIs, people who are you know, wanting to get their data out there, people who don't build APIs for a living. You don't have to. So I'm gonna I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna see what I can fix this. So I said it's create lead. Um, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to see if there's anything that uh, that can help me out here. So that's create lead. Um, let me have a look here. So I'm gonna, it's going off to get all the connectors that are available. Uh, that's fine. Let's see what I can do with lead here. Um, and I'll just wait for it to sort of search through. Go out again slightly. Go through a lot of lines here. Um, actually, I'll do update or create lead. And what I can do here is I can do update and create lead. Now, but again, you know, we wanted to build this in. We find that things like you know upserts and this kind of thing are very common. So we want to build it into the smart connector. So what's my key going to be? Tell you what, let's pull my key down here. Update create lead where? And again, it's going off to Salesforce to find all the different keys. This is all um, in the data here. So I'm going to say where my email equals um, my email that I uh, that I sent in. So I'm going to say my request parameters here, and my email is here. So my unique key is going to be my email. 
and populate target seals and airflows. I've got a few suggestions, so I'm going to hit those in there because again, you know, I'm going to use my cognitive mapper um, to go through first name, last name, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What else have we got? I won't bother doing the uh, telephone one again here. Notice that email has automatically mapped in the value in the where, where condition, so I don't have to worry about that. And the lead ID there is from the previous lead there. Yeah, let's get rid of that. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to apply those 11 suggestions. Thanks, Watson. And there's one suggestion left over, which is the ID. And I'm going to get rid of the create lead because I'd rather have the update of create lead. Maybe I spotted that before. Uh, there is one thing here. If I go back to the uh, response, then I can see Salesforce create lead ID. Notice this has sort of disappeared. It's kind of not happy because I've deleted that one here. So all I'm going to do is just uh, delete that. And the reason it's going red is because if you want to do code with JSON Arta, you absolutely can, and you can go in as a, as a, as a, you know as advanced as you want. But here's the create, create, update of create lead. Take the lead ID. There's the lead ID. Is the Salesforce ID. So um, all I'm going to do is hit. Um, what am I going to do? Let's uh, let's let's try let's try this flow. So I'm going to hit uh, continue here. Let's make sure it works uh, as far as the developer's concerned. I wouldn't want to ship uh, untested code. Uh, let's see if I can uh, get this to go. Hit continue. And it's going up to Salesforce to see if I can get a, uh, a lead created, updated. Oops, uh, back, uh, back to my email again. All uh, right, let's uh, let's uh, choose sample data. Uh, and I'm going to regenerate this. So I'm going to regenerate this one here. And I'm going to uh, try this flow. Hit the button. And I'm going to try it again with exactly the same data. And notice the Salesforce ID stays the same because it's doing an update. Um, it's actually doing the same thing twice. So I'm going to go back and say, oh, hang on a minute, to my consumer. OK, I fixed it. Hey, Andy, this is Andy here. I fixed your code for you. Do you want to try it again? Oh, yeah, sure. Let me try it. So I go through and I'll hit it. Oops, I need to actually sort of go. Uh, put, this is uh, something we need to have uh, done. We need to actually go back in because it's republished itself. Um, oh, I know why the problem is. I was just wondering where that had gone. Uh, might need to start it. It's when I do the start it, it actually publishes out to the gateway. You can see that the test arrives here. So I should be able to go out to the developer portal and see it. He says confidently. OK. What should have actually happened here, I'm going to stop it and I'm going to start it, is it should have actually. Uh, Gone into that portal. I may need to sign in and sign out. Let's see if I can actually uh, go in and uh, find anything in here. Let's see if I can find the API products. Okay, let me, uh, let me sign out here and sign in again. Uh, this doesn't normally. Uh, don't normally need to do this. I think I uh, did not uh, obviously uh, sacrifice to the demo gods enough. There we go. Red's the new uh, customer API. So this is my new version of it. I go in. I hit the uh, new API. I'm going to go and post. I'm going to go and try it. And it's even migrated my subscription. I don't have to resubscribe again because obviously we've got API management. It migrates your subscription from version 1 to version 2, et cetera. Hit generate. There we go. So there's my ID. Go through, et cetera. And uh, where we go. So I can come through here, do this one, say that's the Salesforce ID, send the same data again, let's just prove it's actually working. There we go, and it's the same Salesforce ID again. So what we're doing is we're saying, look, you know, you can build, and, that, and that's ready to go. I mean, obviously, we can make it as simple or as complex as we want, but the key thing is we've put a rate limit on it, we've put security on it, we've built a fully um, open API uh, free, you know, compliant um, API. And you know that's that's sitting there out, out on the internet, and I'm perfectly confident with that. It's sitting there on IBM's gateway and IBM's cloud, and it's all very happy. Or any cloud you need to do it. So, in a way, that's uh, that's that's sometimes as much as I want to show you. But we're an API conference, and APIs, as you probably found out, aren't just about REST these days. So if I go back into um, my designer here, and I can go back into my dashboard, and what I can do is I can uh, go in and I can say, OK, let's go to home. I'm going to create an event-driven flow. And you could say, event-driven flow? That's not an API. APIs are all about REST. Bear with me a sec. So what it's actually doing is we're finding that a lot more these days, you know, we said IBM believes that integrations are multi-style. And uh, you know, we've seen, seen about the idea of closed loop and uh, you know, testing and everything. So I can actually say, um, oh, let's say leads. 
that's detecting new lead, right? So I can respond in real time to events. The connectors are small. I can respond to changes. I can respond to events coming from the system. Again, they're all built in here. And it's going off to Salesforce, finding out all the data. So I'm saying, okay, when a new lead comes in, what do I want to do? And okay, um, let's see what I've got here. Well, everything's all about Kafka these days, right? You can hear a lot about, oops, if I could spell Kafka, it'd be dangerous. Everything's about event streaming. Everything's about Kafka. Um, you know, um, it's like, okay, well, let's, let's put it on a Kafka stream. So again, I'm going to get my Kafka connector. Again, everything's all, all in the box. And what I'm, uh, I'm going to do is I'm just literally going to go in, go into Kafka, and I'm going to send a Kafka message. And then uh, all I do is I go, in, go into Kafka again. It links it to my Kafka account. It goes in. It goes and finds all the metadata. It can find all the topics. Again, it just connects. So I'm going to send it to the leads. Uh, what's my key going to be? Well, my key is, oops. What's my key going to be? Hmm, I'll see none of those. I want the, uh, I want the, uh, I want the uh, lead ID, please. That's fine. And I'm just going to put a message in there. And again, I could, you know, go through and, uh, you know, pull out all of the average schema and everything. But I'm just going to put a simple, uh, I'm just going to put a simple payload that will come out as JSON. And I'm just going to put some like, yeah, uh, new, new lead as um, created for user. And I'm just going to add in first name. And you know, so we'll go through. Actually, let's, uh, let's see what I've got here. Oops. And I can say, here's my first name. And I can just put my last name here. So again, you know, I can go through my last name, etc. And again, doing that, uh, so if I just say, uh, leads, um, and I'm going to say my new leads are, is an async API. Why am I saying it's an async API? Well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to start from here. I'm actually sort of going to go through because I'd have to go in and build a Kafka client, etc. And I'm running out of time. But what I did want to show you is that I've got this, and I can build this Kafka API. And we believe that everything is multi-style. So I show you this portal that I uh, that I built earlier, um, and this is one where I have brought it in. I've got all different API products, and I can have as many of these as I want, and I can secure them all differently, et cetera. So if I go into my retail one here, I can have my products with all my different APIs. And notice these are REST, okay? So if I go in and say, okay, here's my price lookup, and this is what you've already seen before. So I can go in, and this is one with everything in, so get, put, all the uh, code generation, and all this kind of thing, all the try, et cetera. But if I go back, then I can also see that I've got Kafka async APIs. And it's a little twist on the tail because there is an async API gateway, which manages and exposes securely your Kafka APIs as well. So you can have async APIs, which are being driven from Kafka. Again, it's an async API, follows the standard protocols Kafka, goes through, shows me where my Kafka endpoint is, show me who my download the async API. And again, discuss the API on the forum. And I can go through, I can see all the stuff, I can see the auto generated code so that I don't know how to consume my. Uh, my Kafka data, because some people are new to Kafka, so simply you know, put the thing in. I can use the Kafka connector to consume Kafka streams and do other event-driven ones. I can see the data definition. I can see all my Avro schemas. I can see my example payload. You can see the same thing. And the key thing is that if I go in, I've got my asynchronous gateway, which can manage my Kafka and secure my Kafka and all this kind of stuff and put policies on it. I've got my REST gateway, which can do all the same with the REST APIs. And again, it's REST APIs. That gateway can also do GraphQL as well, and we can manage GraphQL endpoints. So the idea is we can build and manage fully multi-style APIs all in the one simple set of tooling with one developer really quickly. OK, it's taken about, what, 50 minutes for me to show it to you, but you can go even faster if you want. And you can do that full stack interactive development. What you've built is a fully scalable Kubernetes deployment. What it gets to, um, built down as containers, it gets uh, deployed down to uh, OpenShift, it's deployed as a replica set, all your passwords and credentials are kept as secrets, all your configurations are config maps. And again, you know, you can deploy it on any cloud you want. And hopefully, in this entire demo, in addition to no PowerPoint slides, you haven't seen a single line of code either. We believe integration is for everybody. If you're a techie and you want to go in and you want to code in Java or C or uh, you know, JSON or functional programming, that's absolutely fine. If you want to write um, policies talking to HSMs, if you uh, want to go and write the swagger yourself or the open API yourself and import it, that's fine too. 
But we reckon that um, you know we can build APIs faster and quicker and a better quality, you know, really, really easily, as you've seen here. And uh, we would love you to go in, start a trial, and try it for yourself. I've been talking in my uh, very fast Mancunian British accent for a long time now. Um, so Olga, I don't know if um, if you've got any questions there. Nope, none have come in. So again, if you guys have any questions, please be sure to put them into the chat and we will go over it. Uh, also, if you would like to follow up with any of us, we are on um, the connection with any API days and more than happy to follow up. Exactly. Olga, anything else you'd like to say? I mean, um, basically, I think we're... Uh... You know, we're on, we're on for an hour, so I think uh, nobody ever complains when a uh, presenter or demo finishes early. Exactly. Uh, said, uh, um, to get to this, basically, just um, go into your favorite search engine and uh, Google IBM Cloud Pack for integration and, you know, uh, spot the IBM.com hit. And yep. again, you know, you can see all the details. You can see the demo. There's my mate, uh, Cy Venom, who will uh, go and tell you all about it. And again, you know, we've got all the, uh, all the different use cases and, uh, you know, the docs and everything you need to know. And again, if you want to try it out, click it pop it onto the IBM cloud and you're all good to go. Thank you, Andy, very much. And please make sure you pass by the Partners Village with IBM, where we have a lot of our con content and resources there. We also have one more session taking place this afternoon um, featuring Talia Hooker. She is at 3.55 p.m. Eastern as part of the main sessions. And tomorrow we do have another workshop that will be at 1.30 p.m. So thank you very much and have a great day. Thank you very much. And uh, everybody, please stay safe. Hopefully we'll be able to uh, meet up in person uh, sometime soon.